All right, look at this beautiful little stream here. Today we're going to do a video fly fishing this tiny stream using only this. This is a pocket mini fly rod from Japan. It's a fixed line fly rod. So essentially very similar to Tenkara. It's about eight foot long fully uh, extended. So I'm going to show you how I rig this up. I have these little storage spools here that already has my main line, which is really just tinted fluorocarbon. They call it level line. And then on the end of that, I attach a leader and my fly. So I'll show you how I rig this. So you just take the cap out. And on the end of all of these rods, there's a little piece of typically red line. And it's called the Lillian. And what I got to do is uh, attach my level line to that. It's actually pretty easy to do. So I make an overhand knot and then a loop, a slip loop knot essentially. And I wrap that Lillian line through there twice. So, that's all I gotta do. And then once I have it through there twice, I just have to pull on that slip knot and it'll bind up on there really tight. And with this kind of slip knot, the more the fish pull on it, the tighter and tighter that connection gets. So I don't have to worry about the fish coming off. Then I'm just going to go slow ahead and slowly take each section out. These, these uh, Tinkara style rods, they just basically have these segments that slide inside each, each other, just like uh, those dolls from Russia. So just a bunch of interlocking pieces. And there we go, that's my rod. So typically you're gonna make your level line just about the same length or a little bit shorter than your rod. So this is a 2.7 meter rod. And I think I have a little bit shorter than that main level line about eight feet and then a couple feet down to uh, a fly so all i got to do now is just cast out and basically just like in any other fly fishing uh the weight of the line just carries the fly forward i'm going to start with a little nymph here I got the barb pinched on that. I'm gonna go ahead and soak that nymph, get a little bit wet so it sinks better. So I'm gonna go over kind of how I break down these little streams uh, to locate fish. And I'm gonna go over some of the casting techniques too and the different types of flies I would use. So there's a nice uh, pool right here in front of me. And this is perfect for uh, a slow sinking nymph like I'm using here. But I could also use dries too in this nice still water. But we'll start with nymphs and uh, as the day warms up and we get more of a hatch going, I'll probably switch over to dries. I'm just going to cast the nymph out. And then I watch to see if that line jumps. So let me know. So basically that line's brightly colored to help indicate a strike. And I like to fish these streams uh, from downstream up, which is the opposite. Oop, there's fish. Oop, there we go, got him. Little guy. I'm gonna wet my hands so I don't hurt him. Come on. It's a little brookie, really pretty. And with that barbless hook, he should just come right out. There you go. So those are not native here, but oftentimes those areas right behind the boulders, these big boulders where there's uh, a good spot they can sit in an ambush. There we go. There's another fish. That's that pocket water that can be so productive. And then basically how I fight these fish on these small rods is uh, you just lift it up behind your back 
and that's a native uh, West Slope cutthroat right there, a small one. There you go, a little cutty. You can see the red on his throat. Oh, there's another fish. This is a little bit bigger one. So basically I'm just lifting the rod using, you see the rod flex here. And the main point I'm trying to do is just keep pressure on these fish. This is a barbless hook. And then I just slowly start swinging that rod tip up over my head and backwards. And that will slide the fish towards me where I can then hopefully net them. There we go. That's not a bad fish. Always wet your hands uh, if you're going to handle them. Beautiful little cubby. Get him back. There he goes. Okay, one of the reasons I really like small streams is it's easy to break down the habitats. I'm looking for four main habitats when I'm small stream fishing. One is what's called the run. So that's where it's coming out of a pool above it. You've got swift water with bubbles like you see here at the top of this run here, this pool. And then it transitions slowly into deeper water, which we call a pool. And then it speeds up into the tail out section and you get riffles, right? So run, pool, riffles, and it just repeats. But within that, there's also what I call pocket water. And that is where you'll get like a large boulder will stick up and break up a riffle and create a, a small area of slow moving water. And those can be really good for trout. For me, the best place to find trout um, are in pools and pocket water, but you can also find them in those riffles too, if there's enough boulders down there to break it up. So I, I'm not even gonna bother fishing this because it's sh too shallow. There's really not enough structure or cover or depth to hold fish right here in front of me. But up here, I can see deep, deeper water. There's still enough of a wave energy and riffles on top to break up the surface. And that gives the trout protection and makes them feel safe. So one of the cool things I can do here with this uh, pocket uh, fly rod uh, I can just use a bow and arrow shot where I basically just pull back on it, load up the rod, and I can just shoot the fly out into that pool and see if I can get anybody out there. Oop, there's a fish. Got it. That's a decent sized cutty. Still got quite a bit of energy. There we go. There you go. That's a nice size fish. Really pretty too. All right. Well, there you go. Beautiful cutthroat. Get him back in the water. There he goes. And one of the things I've noticed about small streams is that very often the first fish I'll catch out of the pool or a run is going to be the largest fish. So they do seem to have some hierarchy of dominance. Uh, who gets to feed on what? If you're, if you're the big fish, you get first stab. So when you're picking small streams, it's actually good to have a stream that is losing a lot of elevation because that's going to create this habitat. You have a big flat wide area. That might be great for traditional fly fishing, but it's really not good for creating these diversity of habitats that hold fish. Fish like having cover and this change in the elevation, creating all these pools and waterfalls stuff is what they like. It's quite a bit of midges hatching right now, but I'm not seeing anything feed on the surface yet. This is a nice deep pool um, with several pockets created by boulders. I should be able to pull a few fish out of here. So I'm gonna start over there. 
and just work my way across the pool. I keep getting bit, so it must be really, really small. Yeah, nothing there. So I'm just going to systematically work across the whole pool. There we go. There's a fish. Little guy. Not going to break any world records with that little cutthroat. But they got to start small somehow. See ya. All right, we're going to try over here now. This looks like most promising to me. It's got the most cover. There's a nice chunk of slow water there. If I was the big fish in this pool, that's where I'd be sitting. There we go. And there's a bigger fish. Nice size cutty. Sort of the standard big fish for this stream is going to be in that 8 to 10 inch range. Oop, lost them. They can wiggle off those hooks pretty easy. That's okay. We'll see if there's any more in there. I doubt it. Usually those big fish bully out everybody else. Yep, no bites on that drift. That's pretty typical. You catch a big fish in that prime spot, you probably won't pull anything else out. Okay, so here we have a series of small pools. I call these basically one cast pools. So there might be a fish here, pretty small, might be a fish there. I'll just do one drift through each one just to see. Nothing in that one. So there's a little pocket here, could hold a fish. Oh, there's fish. Yep, little guy. <laughs> Just lifted him right over everything. I'm getting my hands wet for him. A little brookie. There he is. Probably the only fish in that pool, but we'll check. Yep, no bites on that next drift. So I'm gonna just keep moving. It's not really worth spending a ton of time in these smaller pools. Uh, there might be one more fish in there, but there's probably a lot better habitat further on up here. Like right through here, I see a series of several large pools. Okay, let's see what we can find here. Maybe something on that other side. It's really fast in here. Probably too fast right in front of me. But over there on that far side, even if I can get it super tight to that boulder, it's a little, yep, perfect. There's a little bit of a slow spot. Ooh, had a bite right there. Try a little bit further over in the slower water. Here we go. Oop, it's a big fish. It's going to take me down. It's definitely using that current against me. There we go. Beautiful. Decent sized fish. Nope, he's gone. <laughs> Bounced out. Alright, it's pretty shallow behind this boulder, but it's worth a cast at least one. If there's going to be any fish there, they're going to be small. Not a lot of cover. Nope, no bites. Try one more drift. Yep, there's a fish. Little guy. It's not too bad, actually. There 
There we go. Got it. A little female. There we go. Pretty little girl. All right, let's head on up to that better looking water. So there's this first pool here on the right. Probably a lot of glare from the sun. And then there's this pool up here. This one looks better. So I think I'll start at the top of that pool. Let that drift down in there. There we go. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, missed him. There we go. That's a beautiful cutthroat. Right in the nose, right where I like to get him. Hands out. There we go. Pretty. I hooked a rock. Good catch. At least the 60 pounder. The nice thing about small stream fishing is usually you can just come back and get your. Ooh, nice. Beautiful. Cool thing about this stream is you can see all these bugs here. Got some little caddis. Uh, we've got, those are also caddis. Green caddis. There's some small mayflies. A lot of bug life in here. And then I can also see on this boulder here some big stone fly casings. This is the kind of stuff you want to see in streams. Like, there's a lot of streams here that are really just not that productive. And I'll go and fish small streams all the time, and I'll just come up completely empty-handed because there's just no fish in there. They're so barren. There's just not enough nutrients. So if you roll up on a stream and it's got all these bug life everywhere all over the rocks, there's a pretty good chance it's going to support a good trout population. All right. It's a good looking little run. Oop, there's a fish. Ooh, that's a nice one. I saw him turn and run for it. Colors on this guy are really nice. Really pretty colors on this buck. Nice size fish for the stream. There you go. Beautiful. Cool, beautiful fish. Well, let's see if there's anybody else in there. Oh, saw him. Yep, another nice one. See, that rod's really bent. Really nice colors on this fish. Beautiful. Oh yes, that's a really pretty fish. A nice red on the belly. Gorgeous. Get him back on his way. Okay, so today I've been using a caddis imitation that has a little bit of wire on it. Uh, that kind of helps to get it to sink. And I also have some beadhead caddis, lots of different caddis imitations, stonefly. Those are really good for fishing those deeper pools. If the small stream that you're fishing has a lot of deep plunge pools and the fish are holding deeper, say that they're five, six feet deep sometimes, it might be a good idea to put on these beadhead nymphs. Um, in my situation, you know, this is the end of the summer. The stream water levels are pretty low. I'd end up getting snagged up more on the bottom if I ran a beadhead. 
Uh, I probably could get away with these smaller ones, but uh, I'm just going to stick with the unweighted nymphs. Uh, but you can also run uh, a variety of, like, I have a lot of traditional soft hackle flies uh, that are the typical fly used in Japan for tinkara fishing. Uh, so those essentially have very little weight uh, whatsoever. Uh, some of them, will, like this one, will have like kind of a brass body that will have a little bit more weight. They'll let it get down the bottom a little bit deeper, but most are just plain thread with no wire whatsoever. So here's an example of that. And there's not much to them, just some thread and a single soft tackle feather counter counter wrapped on there and pulled forward. But what I'm going to switch up to now is dry flies. So obviously dry flies aren't going to be as effective in the deeper, swifter moving water. But in that transition water and over the pools, um, in, the, in the runs and pools and pocket water, these are really visible. Uh, it's really fun because you get to see the fish strike the lure or the fly. And today, since you know, end of summer, there's a lot of yellow jackets flying around right now. I'm actually going to fish this little yellow jacket foam fly. I really like foam flies for these small streams. Um, because these hackle flies tend to get beat up quite a bit. You can put silicone on them to help them float. Uh, but with the foam flies, you really don't have to worry about that so much. And uh, it's just really fun to watch them take it. So we're going to put this little foam yellow jacket fly on uh, and fish it for a little while and see what we can do. Nothing there, so I'm going to shoot it along that cut bank over there. If I can get something to come up after it. Oh, there's fish. Ooh, that's a nice one too. Yes. Oh, he's off. Dang it. Now we know it works. Now let's cast one up here and see if we can get something. There we go. There we go. Ooh, nice fish. This would be a big brookie. Oh, he's in between my legs. No. Get me ready. Gotta pull him up between my legs. There we go. Woo! Tank brookie. Yes. Yeah, he smashed that. Yellow jacket. Look how big their mouths are compared to the cutthroats. Arr. They can eat anything and everything in this stream. Alright, let's get him back in the water. All right, see if there's anybody else in there. Yep, there's another one. That's a cutty. It's so much fun to watch them come up and take those dry flies. Here he goes, he's off. Okay, so I put on a hippie stomper. I like the hippie stomper because they have a relatively small hook, but a very large profile. They're very robust because they're mostly foam and then some very stiff hackle. Uh, really easy for me to see, really easy for the fish to see, and they can take a beating. So let's give this a shot. All right. I'm really asking for trouble, but I'm going to try and shoot up into this gap here. I have no idea how I'd get that fish out of there, but I'm going to try. Looks too good up in there. All right, can we do it? Oh, there we go. Oh, dude, there's a big fish too. Just took it. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> I'm all hung up in the trees and stuff. I don't know how I'm gonna land this fish. Woo. Oh, it's a big fish. No. Nah. Oh, he's pulling me into these trees. Oh, I missed him. Yes, I got him. Woo! Oh, it's a monster rookie. Awesome. 
Can't believe I got that out of there. That's just nutty. Hammered that. Look at the colors on that. Beautiful. That was awesome. Okay, I think I'm going to finish up uh, on that really big brookie that I pulled out of that crazy hole. Um, so I'm going to show you how I put away uh, this rod and my line and leader at the end of the day. So I have this little spools and I put the fly on the hook there and I keep tension on it and I start wrapping back and just start wrapping it around there. It's got a little rubber gasket kind of holds everything in place. And then I just start collapsing about two or three sections at a time to give me some slack. You see the rod tip there on the other end. And I can start wrapping up my leader and my level line, this bright orange fluorocarbon. And then I just keep compressing these sections down. And just keep wrapping. Be careful not to put too much pressure on the tip. Then I'm going to go ahead and push it all the way down now to the tip section. Make sure that tip section is all the way down inside. It's protected. I'm going to go ahead and wrap all that up. Now, if I was just hopping from one section of a stream to another that was maybe that was too thick or I want to go try a new area, I could just leave it like this, run this down through here, and boom. I've got everything I need. The tension of the line is going to keep the tip from coming out. And everything I need here, I can spool two different level lines. I can also store some flies here. Uh, but if it's the end of the day, like it is for me, then all I need to do is take the line off the Lillian. So I'll just pull that, and boom, there it goes, it comes off. And just finish wrapping this up. Put my cap in, and I'm good to go. I just throw this in my backpack and I'm done. I can walk back to the car. If you have any questions about this little cool pocket mini or Tenkara or small stream fly fishing, just let me know in the comments below. I'll put links to this super cool little uh, pocket size fly rod. And I hope you guys have an opportunity to get out and enjoy some time on a beautiful mountain stream or mountain lake and uh, catch some of these. All right, guys, well, I'm going to head in. I hope you learned a lot today about small stream fishing. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder, and I'll see you next time.